Tax money, and they went crazy. They was flexing on them. <sighs> These chicken orders, people calling from work, people quitting. Well, look, it was out of control. I, but look, this is look. You can't get mad because you know when you got your tax money, like this is what you. I pay the government. I ain't got no tax money. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's the problem because you, you don't have like you know what I'm saying. The ability to like have like tax money, but you know when you get tax money, like you feel like you know you got rack, 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 rack. Okay, so, you got one rack. <laughs> okay, see, look, I mean, actually, <laughs> actually, actually, you might not even have a rack. Right. It might be. It's actually like right under the rack, quote. So come on out. Right. I mean, but hey, it's a lot more than what it's yours. So hey, we might put right. So here's my point about this uh flexing. People don't start using this word wrong. I got a question. What is flexing exactly? Because I would think flexing would be something like myself. I pay all my bills. I stay with myself. I have my own car. I pay my car pay, my car insurance, all my bills current. I got money in all my accounts and I have a good savings account. To me, I'm flexing. If I wanted to go and go buy something and I still had the means to continue to live the way I live, that's flexing. It ain't flexing to get your tax money and you go spend your money and you ain't got your rent money on the field. Ooh. Or you riding a city bus on the field. <laughs> or you skipping days from work and your check come and you ask me for more about $10. Yeah, $10. That's not flexing. Flexing not going to buy the latest J's and you stay with your mama and you ain't got no car. They're using this word too, too loose. Like loose booty or something. You ain't, everybody ain't flexing. I'm flexing. But I don't show my flex. And then you start showing you flex and people want to start buying a bar of a dollar. Yeah. I mean, yeah. People are like flexing, like flexing, flexing. And you ain't got you know, your shit in the line. You say in Section 8, for $3 rent, but you can't afford your rent. But no. you was flexing. Oh. I'll call you out. <laughs> I'll call you out. Well, I mean. That's just a concern I have. I'm flexing on them. They start doing dance with it. You flexing on them. What your rent receipt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was your rent receipt. Well, um, <laughs> that's my recap. I'm just, that just bugs me. This I'm flexing on, them. and I have called out individuals face to face. So what you're saying is like people are still like flexing. Yes, I asked them. See how we. No, they can't flex. Cause see, when C.I. was coming through, you was ordering 20-piece tailgates and 8-piece tailgates and let me get these dinners. And, but now you want to talk about, you got any specials. <laughs> oh, but we didn't care about specials last week. Don't do that. 
just be, just be, you know, balance, balance your life, balance your life. There's nothing wrong with saving money, having something in reserve just in case something occurs, just in case. You know what I'm saying? You want to go on a trip. Don't go on a trip, come back, you ain't paid your rent. Like that bugs me. And then you want to borrow some money. Or you want me to feel bad for you. No! I ain't going nowhere. Well, I don't know. Well, I mean, I guess my, my TI AA experience was more so. Um, some people enjoyed it. I really don't care too much for it. Right. I wish you fucking could live some time. <laughs> Tell them why. Let them know. I just wish it. I mean, because. Y'all cheat. I mean, Masses don't tip. Yeah, yeah. 99, 90, I would say 98% of you guys. 98, which means that that's the majority. What majority? 98% <laughs> <90, laughs> of you um, individuals that come down for the other late. Yeah. Yeah. Just stop. Yeah. I mean, I just don't understand. Like, people still have to make a living. Like, you know, I work in the service industry and. I, I, I love what I do and I don't, you know, and I don't mind what I do, but in a sense, like, people still gotta live off of, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is still people's living. And some of y'all mofos come in there, y'all be ordering, like, Patron shots. I mean, like, y'all go in, like, go in, like, Filet McNaught and everything. <laughs> like, steaks, y'all, y'all getting y'all, well, y'all. How much is the ass scrimps? Y'all getting y'all Alfredo pasta. How much is the ass scrimps? Y'all getting, I want scrimps and chicken of mine. Y'all getting y'all Alfredo pasta. Y'all ain't trying to get no lunch portion, but y'all trying to get the dinner portion. And then y'all adding shrimp and everything in the back of the house, and then want to send it back because y'all like it, and you want to get mad. It's just a whole lot going on, but yet, you sitting up here with a Michael Kors watch on, yet, you sitting up here, you know what I'm saying, you got your printed tights on, but yet, you sitting up here, and you got your Remy, and you got your, 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 your Remy flowing all the way down to the crack of your ass, and then, you you know what I'm saying, you come in there, and you spend up a hundred and some dollars, and then you leave like six dollars on a hundred something dollars, like, somebody tell me what's wrong with that. Well, I will. That shit ain't right, and that shit ain't cool. And y'all need to check that for real. And y'all be wondering why. They stereotype our age. Why, why, why we get stereotyped when we go into places, because y'all make it, because certain people make it so easy for people to get stereotyped. Like, I mean, it's, you guys basically open up the door for people to get stereotyped. Like, I, I want people to understand that five dollars is not the universal like five dollars has become the universal black tip like if you like if you, like that is not like no sorry in a, in a nutshell in a nutshell five dollars is not hey okay. anybody good that's, like if i gave you five dollars you know we'll be going like that so what makes you think you give me five dollars that's a gallon of gas taking care of you or well, if that okay depending on the day of the week yeah, and, and if it fluctuates Five dollars, you know what I'm saying? Right. And people gotta, you, and depending on what restaurant you work at, people gotta tip out of that five dollars. So you mean you tell me out of that five dollars? I get three fifty. No, I don't even get that much. I'm still oh. getting less than that. Ooh. Tip my damn brother. But anyway, in a nutshell, y'all need to get that shit together. And if you don't know, take this as an example to do better and learn better. If you don't know, I don't mind. Like I don't mind you not knowing, but at least try to forth the effort to at least to learn. Okay, I mean, I understand everybody don't know, and I understand that you wasn't taught when you were younger, or whatever the case may be, and you don't understand the whole concept of tipping, but, I mean, think it's about, a learned behavior, exactly. you can learn. You can, right. But either way, that we can recap. Can recap. Yeah, we can recap. My weekend recap is, I mean, I don't know, I'll work. Um, I do want to give a shout out to uh, my cousin, uh, Christian. Um, yeah! Uh, I'm wrong. Well, this brought one. She had to do a. Uh, okay, look, I love my auntie. But if you text me nine times about the same thing, because you need to refix it, don't don't put me on that text. But she needed to refix because it wasn't like really brought one. But it's in, it's like uh, it, it's who was it? No, she said Broadway. No, Broadway. she did. But, she, I but I know, but she but she sent like the text that basically says that he um got accepted or he got the role to play in a play um in New Hampshire. So it wasn't Broadway. She oh. thought it was Broadway. But she had to, oh. send, she had to send a recap to, let, to not say it wasn't Broadway. But it's more so in New Hampshire. Whatever it could be. He so I, so I here. Here. Right. So, hey, congratulations one more time. Good job, sir. So, um, yeah, first things first. You want to start off with one talk? Um, let's get into it. No. All right.
So, uh, first things first, um, I'm going to go ahead and get, in, get into it. I guess um, a lot has been going on um, this weekend. What I've been hearing a lot about is this whole, like, Fantasia, like, uh, Jet Magazine uh, situation that's been going on between her and Jet Magazine. So, this is the recap according to, you know, what I know. Basically, uh, Fantasia did an interview for Jet Magazine. And she sent in, uh, what she said, she sent in a picture, a promotional picture to go on the cover for Jet Magazine. For her new movement. For her new movement, her new rock soul movement. And Jet Magazine seemed that it wasn't appropriate or it didn't fit the Jet Magazine, like, style or culture or whatever you want to say for the magazine. So they used a picture that was from, like, teen years ago, from, like, when she had just got off of Idol or whatnot. So, um, yes, a lot has changed since 10 years. So, Fantasia felt like it was like, she felt like it was disrespectful to her because it doesn't represent. portray or represent her new movement and where she's at currently. It kind of like took her back. And in a sense, I guess I kind of understand where she comes from as far as, Hold on, what you say? As, as, far, as far as, you know, using an old picture when I'm trying to give you a new movement, but I can also understand Jet because Jet has a certain type of way. Mm, like, let me stop you. What? That should have been a conversation between her people and them. You just don't come out with something you ain't nobody called me, approve it, told me what you thought about the pictures. I mean, that should have been a conversation between management or something. You just don't automatically just change the a cover, I'm expecting one thing, I get another product, and then they will be okay with that. I'm with them. I'm with her. I need an apology. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right. Then I ain't like what the editor did. Tell me some, um, I don't think I should have to be in someone who can't read. Now, see that right there? I can't hurt for y'all no more because now you're disrespecting me as a person, period, outside of, you know what I'm saying, me being a superstar. Now you're attacking my character, and that's, that's, that's too much because she has work to try and, you know, build her character back. You know, because she's come back. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's been beat. She came back. You know what I'm saying? Like, the whole cook situation, having a kid. Like, she's trying to make herself a, a new her. Right. She wants a new me. And they're trying to go back. Don't do that. Mm -mm. Yeah. She's but, trying to move forward, move forward. If you didn't like the picture, you could actually do something else or just move in a different direction. But you don't go get something from the past and throw it on there and think I'm going to be okay with it. Well, my thing is, out of most situations, I thought that Jack would at least do their own um, photo shoot. For them, right? Or for her, so maybe that kind of, maybe that kind of would have just the content. <laughs> maybe that kind of would have like took away from all of you know, saying what we had, you know, the confusion and all this whole what's name. But she went on, um, she did like a, a interview when she was doing a promotional interview for like Philly, um, somewhere in Philly or whatnot, and radio station. yeah, yeah, radio station, and um, she kind of like read them because a lot of people were just like. Uh, why is Fantasia kind of like mad about this and feeling like she can read and something like that? Which is like old news. Like y'all get over it. I feel hey, like a I, girl can read. Ooh, like my hair, I need to get it done. Don't worry about it. That's why I got a head on. I, be done I feel like I feel like in a sense, I feel like people are just kind of like they take stuff and they run with it. And I just feel like y'all are beating a dead horse. I feel girl, like in that race, I, we, I, don't, I don't, we won. We won. We like, all was right. Let it go. Like, but in a sense, like she never said she couldn't read. She just basically said that. She had a problem reading, and two people. Uh, a lot of y'all. Uh, a, 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 okay. a lot of y'all can't read and write. And at least she was. Or spell. <laughs> <laughs> at least she was woman enough and human enough to admit, you know what I'm right. saying, and try and be real I'm about the situation connect and connect and, and just be like, you know what I'm saying, hey, I'm human as well, you know what I'm saying, like, you know. I'm not the best reader, or I'm not this, that, and the third. But y'all took it like, this. well, not, excuse me. But y'all took it like, she was just like, y'all just took it like, she was just like, I can't read, like, I can't read. You know, right, right, I can't read. But I will say, say this, though, left. there was a lot of good jokes that came. I mean, it's always funny when it's like, joke, but it's like, when you gonna stop joking? It's like, like, some stuff just gets played out. But it's it played out now. Right, but she kind of went in real cute and quaint. When she went in, um, I want, I want her, uh, what's her name at the end? Uh, let me see. She said, um, uh, we band it. We're not band it. Uh, let me see. She said, uh, when, in the interview, she said about, um, being viewed as illiterate. Uh, she made a comment and I quote, she said, uh, 
I'm trying to find out what it's on there. Oh, she said, uh, and I quote, school, I just, I just didn't enjoy it. Single was always on my mind. I wasn't saying I couldn't read, but I hate to read. Okay? That's real shit. Some people hate reading, okay? Yeah. Some, right. I, well, I mean, I don't hate reading, but I mean, it, I, I don't like read every day. Right. So, what? See, she picks up. Right. And reads. Bitch, I got one right now. No, I will. The show. <laughs> hey, ain't no wrong with that. Uh, so she said, um, I just hate to read. She said, but that has changed for me now because one thing okay. I do. <laughs> I'm reading. Hold on, but here, here, here come to read. Here come the literal. Here come to read. Read. She said, um, uh, but that hasn't changed for me now because one thing I do is read my contract because I would not allow anybody to mess me up. <laughs> That's where I messed up. So I will read those contracts and I will read those. But yeah! <laughs> and I would read those checks when they come in. And never that, fuck them up. No, 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 no. Right, no. That did fuck them up. That was it. Told now, look here. I mean, I can read these books, but I can read them numbers and I can read them words and let me know how much I'm getting paid. Right. Are you receiving my check? Right. I mean, she grows, so. She grows. So. <laughs> hey. Oh, I'm saying. Get to and win. Right. Yeah. So, and, um, but off that, let it go. It is what it is. All right. Uh, pick up the new jet this, this week. Uh, also, Fantasia premiered a new um, uh, Bittersweet 2.0, a.k.a. Uh, Lose the Win. Um, I watched the video last evening in my bed. Uh, it was good. It was straight. Um, I mean, name was cheating in her face. I like the um, I like the throwback feel to it. I felt like an old, old period back in the day with a black hair. The Roy Twenty, sorry, I know I'm really the, the Roy Twenty. It was good. I liked it. Um, she was kissing some damn body in her video. Oh, keep your lips. <laughs> oh, Tasia. But I liked the video. It was straight. As far as the video go, I liked the video. But I think it was groundbreaking. Oh hell no! no. Uh, do, I, do I actually think that this single is groundbreaking? No, I feel like it kind of does it represent. I think the whole rock star movement that she was born with. No. no. Do I feel like she can just go ahead and just let this be and release another single and go harder than that? Yes. Um, because I just feel like it is what it is. I feel like it it, it served as a good buzz single. I like the. The whole concept of it, but I don't see it being like. It's a good song, good hip song. Yeah, I don't see it being like. Like Mariah Carey, Trump, Moon, Triumph, or something like that. Triumph, right. right. One of them songs, them feel good. Yeah, basically, good. in a nutshell. Right. right, you gotta lose the win. It was a lesson. Right, so up to the next, what you talking about? Um, that's how about Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> what about me? Okay, look, I'm Beyonce stand to the core. But I can say Rihanna, she has singles. You know, you learn the words and you book, but I've never like really liked her album, album. But like this last one's okay, I, I can work with it. So like, but I know I would never pay my copper coins to go see her because she wouldn't entertain me. She she can't sing, she don't dance. She just literally pissed me the fuck off. I, I just know it. So, uh, <laughs> I goes on Twitter, my shady ass timeline. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can follow me at two piece underscore biscuit. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's me. Two piece underscore biscuit. Two piece of the biscuit, basically. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So I go on my shady timeline and they like, uh, how you cancel your second show of a new tour? Literally, she had one show in Buffalo. That was a disaster. Then you cancel Baltimore. I got laryngitis. Well, you always got laryngitis. Because <laughs> 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 that shit was. Garbage. I would not pay. And then I found out she was basically her ticket price same as Beyonce. Are you kidding me? That's bad. She sounds like a go. She always sounds like a go. The best time she ever sounds to me is when she do something to make him with that little blah that she can do that with that. But other than that, stop. That's a disrespect for the fans to start a show. You ain't got no costume, no uniform, no kind of rest. You on the stage? Just stop. If you start smoking. We are drinking. Maybe you will get land. What? Well, I don't know. Well, how I feel about the whole situation is, I feel as if. Uh, no, I no. Yes, I do like Rihanna. I've liked her ever since she first came out. 
but he had her first, her first album. No, I, have, I have her first couple of albums. No, he had the first album, the one when she was pretty with their son. Music, yeah, music under the sun. Like I've been, been, like I've been, like I've been a part of the Rihanna train, or you know, the Rihanna train or tracks. Train No, it's not. My my thing is with Rihanna is I don't look at Rihanna to go and give me like like an out of this world like Beyonce style performance. I don't get that. Like I don't look at her as that. And I don't feel like every artist is going to give you that. Some artists are going to give you small venues. Some artists are going to give you, you know what I'm saying, straight vocals. Some artists are going to give you, you know what I'm saying, different artists. I mean, that's your lane. I do feel like the, from the clips that I've seen from her in Buffalo, it left a lot to be desired. Being that you had already took a year off previously when you were recording your whole Unapologetic album. You took a year off. Then to relax and to record and to vac- and to vacate no, she didn't. and do whatever. Recording her, she ain't never on vacation. She okay, but vacation. that's a lot because she had just took one off. Hey. Took a year off before other problems. But they reported. But the report is on because she had just took one off. That's why she was all up on Instagram. She was all up on vacation. She was in the Barbados. She was smoking this, this, that, and the third. Why did she had to take that? She got sick or something like the end of the tour or something. No, she just took it because she had just been working so hard, so she took some time off. I have a, I have a suggestion though. You should have been took a break. I mean, she had a year break. She no, I'm saying like she should have been took a break. Period. Because seven, seven years, seven albums, no number one album, but your last one, that's bad. I mean, and you're Rihanna. No, I mean, don't shoot a car. Don't no, I mean, yeah, I mean, everybody, know, everybody knows that, but, but, but the fact is though. It, it, I mean, it, the cookie crumbles how, how it crumbles. And as they said at the end of the day, it's just like, Rihanna is the superstar who she is because she was... Don't just, give a fuck. Right. She just don't give a fuck. And a lot of people, a lot of young teens, just get to the point where they you just don't give a fuck. She's she in that age right now. She's not as old as B. She's not as old as Mariah or anybody else. She's just doing her. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's making, like, she's living life, but she just choosing to live it in front of the people. Back to what I'm saying, talking about the show. Okay. The show in itself. Yeah. The show, <clears throat> excuse me, the show to me had the potential to be a really good show, but it just lacked a lot. Like, I felt like it was no change up in, like, music. I felt like it, if I, I felt like she basically sung it how she recorded it. And to me, when you go to a show, I feel like it should be an experience. And I don't feel like that's an experience unless you probably are high, popping a molly or something like that. Which is part of what I would have had to do or have done to enjoy that show. I don't think you could have went soberly and like, oh yeah, Rihanna fucked him up with that performance. But I don't feel that. And for I, I really don't know what's going on with her right now. Especially for her now to be like taking, well, missing the second show, the second show, and then on top of that, now you're talking about you taking a year long break again. Like, it's just like you just should have took two years. I mean, whatever it's going to be. Maybe you shouldn't have toured. Maybe you should have just let this album be. I mean, to me, I feel like she just toured for the last, what, three or four albums? I don't know. I don't know. I want to know how many tours she had. I mean, I'm being honest. I don't dislike the girl coming I mean, out. That song that I like that she's done. I just don't think that she. I feel like she came from the whole. Picture she had with Chris Brown, and I don't even use that as an excuse, but that came to a different place, and her music then was different. And from there, it's like there's no direction. And I know people say y'all want to try something different, but I also think you got to stay in a certain lane. And that's why she just has hits and don't have like no good body of work because like it's so all over the place. Like you can start something new, you just have that main focus where we know you're gonna give me this and try something new, but you still give me that core. You know what I'm saying? That's happened to a lot of artists in general. They get a lane, instead of them sticking to it, they want to try something new, and then go, forget the lane they already own. Like, don't ever leave your own lane. Just dibble and dabble, but make sure you stay on your own lane. And she doesn't do that at all. Like, I don't know. I think that, for me, the one the last one of the last albums that I really kind of, like, thoroughly enjoyed from Rihanna from, from beginning to end. I don't know. I'm going to say Rated R. That's how she got to ask for my Chris. Okay, see... I didn't listen to that before, so I can't say yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm Rated, Rated R to me was like, you know, like, uh, how many years ago was that? More, what, four albums ago? No, what? No. Yes, it was. No, talk that talk loud, Rated R, I believe. Right, so that's three albums ago. Yeah. That's a lot. So her fourth album was your favorite? 
Right. Yeah, we were told the R didn't do other things. We were going to try and go like movies. We were going to die. Oh, we're going to walk. All right. You like a fourth? I'm serious. I like. Yeah. All right. Woo! So, she got that out of the way. But whatever it's going to be, I hope she gets this all. I really hope she takes take time and mentally gets that right. Because if you ain't here right as an artist and being in the spotlight, I think she got a lot of things she needs to work through and she ain't never worked through and it's just like most stuff on most stuff on most stuff and like she getting desperate now and no one's answering that call and I don't want her to like I I would hate for her to lose her career so early to have so much music out. Like she has a lot of music out and it's like more or less than her going up like this, she's starting like even now and go dip and die. Like, yeah, and, that's how I feel. And the last thing about it, the track, the, like the actual track listing of like what I saw, like how the how the show flowed, it was just like all of them. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it had no type of like. Yeah, I got you. Um, I guess next thing next, I guess we can go ahead and talk about artists that you do like. Oh, I like a lot of artists. Okay, well I'm talking about B. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm talking about I stand for it. That's how I don't like I'm it. I'm trying to find out, bitch. What the fuck is goddamn shit on her? It's Eve Blue Clear. <laughs> Damn. All right. Real though, know, like, she is like. Uh -huh. But you got to admit, though, I know we all made about a single, but for her to still have your interest and to have a show for the start in like a couple weeks with no single. I don't know. When, when was the first show? Like, April. A couple weeks. Me finna go on this good, good world tour. We got my cop coins. I got my ticket. He got his ticket. We in there. But I'm saying though, for it, but I kind of, I'm happy it is the way it is because I don't want it too leap because I feel like with music being leap, it takes away from the, the mm, other, right. Okay. So maybe she wants to drop a single and she got a date and she's always had a date. And I feel like she learned stuff from her husband because when Walk the Throne came out, did nothing leave. Like that whole album came out, you was like, everything was brand new. I remember it when it dropped, I remember getting it and just being like, oh my God, everything was, you hadn't heard it, it didn't leak. Maybe she figured out what they did and it's going to go that route compared to just doing it. Because he said, I mean, his thing was, you don't send it to Master and all that other stuff. After it, you put it out on iTunes and then you do all that so that it doesn't leak. And that's what she's going, and that's fine with me. But I feel like she learned from um, girls. I don't think girls came out how she wanted to come out, and then it never got that bump that she wanted to have. So I think she learned from that. I mean, this is her second go around being her own manager. I think she's going to handle a lot of things differently, a lot of things better than she didn't do before. Yeah, I guess I guess the part of me just like really anticipating. Look over there. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> wow. Real rock. That's what this is. Um, I just feel like I'm just I'm ready for this to um I'm sorry. <laughs> Something that we shall not speak her. Never. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what you just said, though. Just what? Pop. Oh. <laughs> you are rude. Oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. You're rude. Right. <laughs> Basically, I, I want the single, and I, the anticipation is built. I'm just. I'm on a run. I think I'm more. Me on your t shirt. If that is a single. I'm loving that. I think I'm more just intrigued oh on how the way that this will actually work out. Like, I, it, I don't know. I'm just, I'm intrigued. Like, I feel like this is going to be a different route because nobody has nothing. Like, nothing, nothing going on. And you all got nothing. albums out and y'all complaining about, oh, she everywhere, she everywhere. Everybody has an album out right now that needs to be doing something. Everybody. Everybody. Brandy. Right, nothing. See, I clip nothing. Well, I mean, Brandon said that she was doing doing the game. Okay, whatever. That ain't got nothing to do with you putting out a single. There's no excuse for that. You, you got hyped up. <gasps> Brandy coming out. Album came. I personally didn't like it. But that's my own personal preference. But you still didn't come out with enough to satisfy your core fans, and that's the bad thing about it. 
you can't. I mean, it just ain't gonna work. Maybe she gonna change it now. She can with the game, but whatever. Um, who else came out that ain't done nothing? Um, Peach Cole. I love that album, and you ain't giving me nothing, cause baby, I can I can pick you out six singles. I love everything about that album. Now you messed up. You came from Michelle, and that might have fucked up your flow, but you got to get over that. Go we're gonna go over that later. But I'm just saying, like in general, I just okay. Look, a tour is not your answer to put your music out. You also need to have all singles and be on our radio and stay current, because that album is too good to just be on a pause the way it is. It just is. It's well, being so. it's being handled wrong. Um. Who else came out of the album? Maybe I was all crunk about and ain't done nothing. Rihanna. Rihanna would have had another thing come out. The album just kind of went. I mean, so when Beyonce come out and take over to America, you can see her like, Beyonce everywhere. No, she ain't been everywhere. She really been low key chilling, getting her getting her stuff right. Now, granted, she's still making them pop corn, but she be getting her, her stuff right this time. I feel like her going on tour is really going to hurt these girls. Because she already got the buzz with no single. Like, every day somebody's asking with a single. And that's a good thing when you got your name stay in somebody's mouth. Regardless if it's good or bad. But more time is somebody either hating on her or somebody defending her. But I mean, her name in your mouth. And they in every artist's mouth. So, obviously, they striving to be like us. You striving to be like us. Be like you say, be independent and put shit out and promote yourself. Because you make money off tours and outings and appearances. But y'all ain't on nothing. Like, y'all ain't on in America. You ain't on. Black Friday, America. You ain't on nothing. Like they're on nothing. They're not even. I mean, they're on nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Like I haven't seen nobody do nothing. I was like, oh, let me record that. Nobody, nobody. Now when Beyonce come out, she's gonna be on every talk show that she can be on. She's gonna be on tour. She's gonna do little side gigs. All that. She goes 100 percent in. Even with four, it wasn't the greatest. But she was pregnant. She still done up. Not to some people, but I still think she still went platinum. Did you think? Oh, okay. This happened. Uh, I mean, I'm excited. You want the single? I'm excited. I want the single. Um, so, but hey, to, to me, to me, to be truthfully honest, I kind of feel like I feel like this track listing that did come out, she probably leaked it <laughs> because it does seem like I don't know if it, if the track listing that. It's a lot of people. A lot of people. I've never seen a Beyonce album with that many features, which I like because it kind of, it kind of, it kind of, it kind of, yeah, it kind of throws Beyonce in a whole different lane because she's not by herself. It's just like she, she, you know, Beyonce, musical. Yeah, she knows she can hold. You know, she can hold her own with herself. Like yeah. she can hold her own by herself. But now she wants you to. Hit. Everybody, was, I wish you, wish you could do an album, a song with this person and that person. Now she's giving you what you want. I just hope that these songs live up. Okay. Uh. Ratchet with Lady Gaga and Azalea Bang. That should be good, cause you know Azalea. I don't know, but I, I'm just trying to find out how this is gonna sound. Well, and number one, Lady Gaga, I'm just like so over and done well, her. I mean, who, who but, about her. But I mean, obviously she don't make the album, so I'm, I just want to hear how she's gonna sound. She number one though. You know the first um, song go. Back to business with Jay Z. Back to business with Jay Z. That's my dude, Brooklyn Nets. Put your diamonds up. Yeah, that sounds like um, that's gonna be a hot one. Roller coaster future and uh, Justin Timberlake. I don't know. Me personally, I'm excited to hear about that one. Cause they voices blend yeah, so well, especially from the uh, end. Of, what is that? End of time. Yeah, end of time. I that that oh, that's all right. That's still right. All right. Between them, with, between they, them. when they did that thing on um, what the Black Girl Rock they song the old song. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. They sounded good together. Uh, Visions uh, featuring Shire. I don't know who that is. Dance is soon over featuring Rihanna. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. It gotta be. And if it's Jamaican, that shit gonna woo. Cause you know, yeah. I want a Jamaican. You, you, you been waiting for a Jamaican. She could have also got that. There's your wife. Why in your It might be. It might be. It might be. And side note, not to take what we're talking about, um, Rihanna, I feel like your best selling album is going to be when you go and do an island. Album, album. Because clearly to me, like when you when you, when you are in your island mode, when you are naturally like you're back home in Barbados, and I feel like you should take this time off. But if you can take it off, take it off like two years, go back in Barbados and record in Barbados and bring up so many people in Barbados yes. and record. Yes. I feel like if you when you do that, I feel like it'll be authentic music, and I feel like that's when you're really gonna shine because. To me, you don't have a strong voice to like sing like a lot of ballads and set the third. I mean, you have a decent voice. Not the worst voice I've ever heard. 
But it's not the best voice either. Don't be fear. But what? The worst voice I've heard. <laughs> More on it than Lobby Outlet, Sierra. Um, but an island, a island infused uh, reggae feel type album. That would be nice. Girl, you can smoke all you want. Black. Like, go in. Like, go right. in. I promise you that's going to be it. Right A&R. There. I promise you. And assisted. I, I promise you. Well, that's, back to Beyonce okay. and the track list. Sorry. Um, we promise you that. Uh, more than sex with your Neo. I want to hear this, but I don't really care for Neo. I don't either. So I we do write good songs for Beyonce. So yeah, I okay. But future, is future mean that you wrote it, or future mean that you actually sing it on it? Because Neo voice really aggravates well, me. Well, and, and more than sex with me sounds like I could be fucking buff, buff, you know what I'm saying, buffing and grinding. But see, he, I think he's singing it, but I think he just happy he owned the record. You know, well, man, that's how he was exiled. Talk too damn much. You run your mouth too much, Neo. You do. You need to learn. Be like the dream. Dream shut the fuck up. He mm. he he owns it. Mm. Mm. We're working. That's all he said. Oh no, number seven. Uh, better than ever before. Future Solange. I think it's gonna be good just because Solange is an excellent artist. Like I think she gets slept on, but like her music be. Hey. Hey. Like her music, Solange is her own person. I think she'll add something totally different to Beyonce. Period. I think that's what I want to see from this album because you miss Carter now, bitch. You is Carter. Hold on. So wait. So Beyonce gave you one through seven. She gave you the first seven. Right. Songs, with somebody else. Straight feature, and then she gave you the last four songs. Now I'm on the runway. Me on your t-shirt. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's something oh, okay. on um. So number eight is runway. Number nine. Give me that song. Girl, it was a snippet. It wasn't. A I know, but I'm saying you. The the, the the melody was hot though. Girl, it was a snippet. I didn't have a time. To it was a melody. Snippet, y'all don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a snippet, like what? Right, but it was like different. Why I'm saying she just sounds like the way it went. It was different from her. Putting me on the t-shirt. She could have been taking background. That song could be totally different. I don't know. But whatever it could be, uh, runway sensations, twelve roses, and it's all over. Oh, it's all over. It's gonna be some goddamn. Bang, 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 bang. I'm tired. <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> Fuck, we know she'd be real dramatic on her last song. You know, you're like, it's all over. Like, what do you mean? Like, right, but you'll be here, you'll be like, take it back, take it back. Oh, that's right. But, yeah, but, I mean, if that's a track list, it's cool. You know, I support me regardless. Um, it's all good. <laughs> You see these dumbass questions I be getting? Of course I'm going to buy. I'm buy a couple. Because I support my artists. I mean, I don't drag on Twitter, but I will fuck it with some facts. And I feel like it's hard to come to me with Beyonce. It just is. And I feel like she's the overall package of any artist out, period, today. Period. That's my overall package. From look, from press, to she ain't the greatest speaker, but she's not how to handle herself in the press. Right, and I agree with that. And I cringe every time she talks, but at the same time, I just keep it real. But at the same time, I know she gonna look like she got some damn sense. Right. You know what I'm saying? She ain't gonna have no, and you can't speak. She ain't do that. But she's getting a lot better, a whole lot better. So before I feel like, I'm asking her questions. What you got? Oh, okay. Um. All right, my next topic I have is. Nikki's new look. But I want to talk about that because he's in love with this situation. So I'm going to go to um Chris Brown. Okay, America, look. I mean, we well, have to go in there about Nikki. Uh, all that I have to say is, right. on Nick, Nikki Minaj, Nikki Minaj is what was before. I feel like this is on Nikki to me. Like, but who has on Nikki? That's a real name. Oh, okay. Yeah, on Nikki Minaj. Well, okay. to me, I love it. I love the sexy. I love the like very just. She looks natural. It don't look natural. made up. It yeah, just I, like the, she, I like the natural. Ain't look. no different I like, the, like I love it. I love what she's doing right now. I, well, maybe being on American Idol with Mar- uh, Mariah Carey, she learned something. Cause, cause it's about Mariah Carey. She always been looking the same, but she looked the same. She looked good. Like I mean, okay, but Mariah. I'm not saying no, no. So you taking it wrong. I'm saying as far as like being regal and being. That that's Mariah. Mariah ain't never looked. Mariah been 
That bitch know. been pageantry all her life. Yeah, um, you know that's a great word to describe her. She has, she has pantry. She got the fucking um snow. She up there in the mountain with fucking hips. Girl, she got goddamn boots. I want to sit down. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like I, you like it, I like it. It's cool. Nick Minaj, good job. <laughs> now back to Fitz Brown. What the fuck is going on with him? Like every other day, he in an accident, fighting, shooting. Like, <laughs> what are you doing with your life? I really believe him, Rihanna, need both need some real counseling. Cause they both got issues, and the issue they had back in the day is affecting them now, and it's not in a good way. Cause they're both, and that to me, it's kind of like, yeah, you were on the rise, now you you gonna fall off. Like you, you can't survive like that. He reminds me of a um, it's a lot of you know, I like old school, so it's a lot of like older artists who they top off of drugs. Like you be like, what happened to him? And you watch a song, or something like that. You never know what they be doing. I just feel like he just does the most. It's never like a good day for him, like. It's always something with Chris Brown. You fighting, you cussing, you mad, and you want to say, I'm sorry. That's, I'm over that. I feel like you at an age where now, damn it, you got to buckle up. Like, you making money, you got your little fan base, that's great, Danny. I'm not one of your fans. That's cool. But at the same time, dude, get your life together. Like, I want some more life shit. Get your life right, because your life ain't right. You ain't living right. <laughs> that's how I feel. I don't do what you want to do. Um... Topics. Yeah, next, uh, I guess, I mean, I guess we can go right into just like music industry and like the lack of artistry and grinding Ooh. and how I just feel like. That's going to be a minute. I don't know. <laughs> just in a nutshell, basically what I mean by that is I just feel like a lot of stars and a lot of people now, I don't feel like they have that grind that they that they had back then. Well, I'm going to just say like a couple years back, I don't feel like nobody's grinding no more. I feel like. The only, I feel like the only people that's really grinding right now are oh, like, rap artists. You took a rap right I'm not really even talking about That's it. it. But I feel like rap artists right now are the only people that are grinding. Those are the only people. I, like, I don't know where the R&B people, R&B people and people always talk about some, oh, well, R&B is dead to tell the third. It's like, because ain't nobody really grinding. Ain't nobody really busting. It's only like, top. Like, the only person that's Everybody want to do crossover. Like, everybody want to do crossover. Everybody want to do dance. Everybody want to do third. Like, find your niche. Be in your niche. Why don't you say something about you, staying in your lane? Yeah, like, like, do what you do, but I just feel like, when, when you, when, when you, I understand growing, mind you, I understand growing, but you can't be like trying to grow if you ain't accomplished. Why? You ain't established to be grown. Right. Grow up. Grow up, then grow. Like, I just feel like a lot of people, I just feel like a lot of people just aren't, um, just a lot of artists that don't have that fire that they had back in the day. Basically, old people can make a comeback because there ain't nobody new. Realistic. And to be true with Arlen, I feel like Tony Braxton kind of really read it the most when she was on Wendy and she was talking to um, Wendy about her not recording another album and how basically she yeah, was she retiring. And she, was just like, she was just like, basically, she was like, there's nothing out right now that that makes me want to go in the studio and record. Like, the music now is just like, like there's, nothing, there's, nothing, there's nothing now that makes me want to go in like. Well, I mean, I want to, you know, my favorite is Beyonce, but I like what she said. People don't listen to a whole body of work no more. They just single, 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 and burn out, get another single. That's all they, that's all you got. Like, the reason why I don't buy albums, and I only buy like three people albums, is I buy Beyonce, Kanye, Jay Z. And I buy them because I know I'm going to get a, a whole album worth of songs. And I'm going to like the album. I can put it in the play the whole thing. Compared to some people, you got to. Okay, that's my song. Well, that's all for the album. And then now I have like 10 songs and shit. You short me. Like back in the day, you'd be 50, 60 songs on an album. Like albums would be like, CDs would be an hour some chain. Now it should be like 40 something minutes. Yeah, true. Dude, I can't put the shit on to clean my house. <laughs> <laughs> we got no clean up music. Why? It's like no clean up music. Like, I don't, I don't know. Um, I think the industry, um, they're getting people who are too young, who don't develop. And that's why I like, that's why I love, one thing I do love about Jay-Z is that he makes his all the artists develop before you come out with anything. J. Cole had to develop. He had to get his own stand made before he put an album out. And I can say that that boy right there, that's my dude right there. Now that he's from Fayetteville, like, I feel like everything he puts out is, is stock based. He just don't throw out singles and songs. I think that he don't rush it because most artists would have already had out another album based based off what he did the first album. But he did he, I mean he's still working on it and you should. And I feel like that's the problem with you know money. They just throw shit out. 
that always been like that. Just throw shit out to you. Like, and Drake finally he slowed down and pulled back. And he, he was, I think that he kind of was like, let me slow down because it was just always like, I mean, especially Rick Ross. I mean, before he gave me some good ass album. Like, Rick Ross albums was good. And now he the count with some old Star David bullshit. And that's, it just, it's him trying to go with the times. Like, there's nothing wrong with taking your time and putting out just good work. And like you said, there's nobody who's out here in R&B who I want to hear. But uh, I, you know who I really want to come out of the album? Jasmine Sullivan. I know. But I heard you she was acting her she was before. Thank God. Because I know you told me that you was tired. I know. I know. They don't respect you. But I'm telling you, your last album? Okay. Honey, that thing right there. That thing was, that was an album. That was some throwback, Neo Soul, Jill Scott, old Jill, just like, ain't nothing wrong with Jill Scott now. Just like they say, oh, she might be, that's like an old Jill Scott album. Like, that was what I, that's what I want. If I'm going, and I'm, if I'm going to buy, I want to know that you're giving me, don't give me no little snacks. I need meat, potatoes. And, and I don't even mind spending my money because, I mean, I got my little cup of coins, but I, I don't even want to think, make you think your shit good. But, uh, but just to be truthful and honest, I mean, like a lot of people say, the music industry has completely changed. Right. Um, and it's, it's, it's really about what's Numbers. popping and how, it's basically it's about what's popping, what's hot, and how relevant you are. It's not about how like, much radio time you get. Yeah, it's not really about like the whole body of work. And once we get back into that, I feel like that's when the music industry in itself. Because to me, music will never die. I feel like it's one of those... Country gonna take over. I'm gonna be honest. I'm telling you now. My everybody start getting on some country shit. Because they tend to have real songs. Right. Multiple songs. They sell. They ain't never had a problem selling. You're right about that. Hell, country singers be now. Um, Hell, gospel yeah. coming up on your ass. Well, gospel I was be too. Right, yeah. I understand why because it's you know, but I'm saying like, but they give you bodies of work and you know they can sing. They ain't got no auto tunes or nothing back in them. I feel like some artists now, if you look good and you can dance, you sound iffy, and I can fit you in the studio. You got a record deal, and that's wrong. That's bad. And then you got big girls why he can blow but can't get no deal because I'm too big. So they got to do the independent route, and they got to go underground. Just too much. It just it's just always I don't know. I just feel like. The old a and they used to have, all either they got fired because they weren't producing or your artist is not even relevant and they got these new kids who just like don't out anybody. And and it's it's sad because I feel like there's a lot of people with talent who don't get a chance or people with talent who don't get heard because they don't throw out happy-go-lucky singles. They throw out songs you got to listen to on the radio. And the radio these they play the same shit over and over. And... Kanye, I don't listen to your ass. play the same shit every freaking album. I listen to 105.3, the oldies, and they get it in, honey. It's, they keep it rolling all day, every day. And I mean, I'm older than my soul anyhow, so I like that anyhow. But I'm saying, like, it's the same shit every day. All you day. Know, well, that's fine. But, I, but, but that makes me appreciate music more because I know what it came from. And I know that my uncle throwing a damn. One person album is like ninety songs. You be like, I oh forgot the same damn album. You be now like, me mm-hmm. like, I want to hear something else. And you put on the radio, you be like, oh, put shit back on. Like I get why she don't want to listen to it, cause it's it just it just it's not a whole. It the lyrics don't make no damn sense. You be like, what she say? Like I don't want to do it like that. I mean, but I like listening to songs. I like having the research. That's why I love Jay Z. You have to research his metaphors. You can't just be listening like, oh, I got it. No. Somebody got to go realize, like, what was he saying? I like so that you got to think about it. Then I think I got a real understanding for him when I read his book. Like, I really got where he was coming from. You can't be so simple-minded with your with your music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Simple-minded, you get simple-minded people. And simple-minded people are wishy-washy. You get deep thinkers, you get a fan for life. That's from the book. Read it. Decode it. It's a really good book. Oh, we got that. Alright, um, okay, now we're off. My next topic is not about music or anything, it's about marriage with children. Okay. Well, right, okay. So, um, one of my family members brought up a situation where he was saying, um, we talk about, like, when, uh, you're in a relationship and you're with someone who has a kid. 
but you want to take your relationship and solidify it. And y'all want to become a unit. And the other parent may be in the maybe in the picture, but they're not doing their job. But your child living with your new man or woman is there where where do I fit in as far as like discipline your child? Can I treat them like my kid? Or situations such as that. Like for instance, if me, if I got with a guy and he had a kid with another girl, right? There should be some type of understanding of where if we get married or since we get married and he's living with us full time, I should be able to treat him like I would treat my own child. I ain't saying beat the kid or be bad or nothing, but I'm saying if it's all in good well and where you're trying to make that child succeed or you see things where you can step in and help fix problems, is it a problem with you wanting to be there? And if it's and if that parent other parent is not seeing that way, does that call a problem relationship? And I think it does. Um I know a lot of a lot of guys who have kids with other girls and the girl wants the guy back. You know what I'm saying? Or they're hung up on the relationship and they I ain't gonna see your son. It only hurts your kid in the end. It's not about you and him getting back together. Is if if any if any parent, male or female, wants to be around a kid, I feel like you should make exhaust all possibilities to make that happen because in the end, your child is hurt. Your child may not tell you, but they act out in different ways. Why did your kids smoke weed? Or why are they disrespectful? Or why don't they listen to you? That's why it's things on their mind they want to fix and solve that they may not feel like come to you, but it's nice to have another outlet. Whether it be the daddy girlfriend or the mom boyfriend, maybe they're just, you know, they're not in a situation where they can look at it from both sides and give them both sides right. here and give good advice. And I feel like it's a lot of that going around in society now because a lot of people are having kids with multiple people and then they find that one person they want to be with but then like your girl don't get along with your with your baby mama and then like it hurts the kid like or don't bring that bitch around my kid like that's, that's stupid y'all need to be woman enough or man enough to have a grown conversation like look I love your ex and I want to be a part of your kid's life I don't want to be you your the figure but if you're not stepping to the plate, I don't want your kid to go by the wayside because I like your kid for your kid. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, it, I mean, in a nutshell, like it, I think a lot of it has to do with like maturity, and also at, at the end of the day, I don't, I feel like you need to be mature. Like I feel like kids, I feel like when you have kids nowadays, I mean, you have to, you have to be mature enough to be able to take on what comes along with that kid, especially when you are having kids with multiple people or when the kid, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then if you and that, you and that original baby father who produces wonderful offspring or this wonderful child or whatnot are not together, like you should not be held back from living your life because of him or her being mad because you've been in another relationship and then they having a problem with your child being disciplined, especially if they stand up under the same roof. And I feel like a lot of people just have to realize that um like it can like you don't want relationship you don't want like to me, kids should not be a death sentence right. to a lot of people. Like To me, I don't feel like it should be a death sentence. But I feel like a lot of people make it that. And I feel like they make it a crutch. And I feel like there's ways of working around it. But at the end of the day, you just need to be mature. And you need to realize that if you say that you love this person like you say you love them, enough to want to solidify, as you would say, solidify, you know what I'm saying, your relationship and become one, or, you know what I'm saying, or be in a relationship or whatnot, like, I feel like y'all both need to come to an understanding. And I, you know, basically, like, you know, this is my son. I want you to treat your son. I want you to treat my son as if it was your son. Or I want you, you know what I'm saying, or I want to treat your daughter as if it was my daughter. And that makes the relationship last a lot better. And that would, that would definitely change the turn rate in divorce and mm-hmm. and separation and all this, that, and the third. Think about which, which, will also, which will also cut down on a lot of kids just out here just doing dumb shit, dumb shit. and then when I hit doing the same thing that, you know what I'm saying, that they might have seen from you, which is going out here having kids at 15, 16, or, you know, sex, and this, that, and the third. Like, it's just, it, it's like, it's all a generational curve, and everybody plays their part, and everybody mature up, but, you know, become mature, and show a, a sense of maturity about whatever they want to be. If you want to be an adult, be an adult, but take 
what comes with being an adult. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like in a nutshell. So don't try and blame it like, oh, what they think your child and his daddy don't like when you do this or how mama don't like when you do this, that, and the third. But if they eat my food and I'm providing, I'm feeding, I'm clothing, this, that, and the third, then it is what it is. In that case, then maybe y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't meant to be. Maybe y'all need to just. Right. And a good example of how that can work is Will Smith, Jada, Tiki Smith, and his ex wife, Chantay. Like they, Co-parent, his first son Trey, and she said I had the woman to go talk to her and, and respect her as a woman. This is your son, but at the same time, he's going to be mine too. Like when we get married, I'm his stepmother, and they tend to work it out. And I mean, she's always preached that to where women have to, you have to have communication, and women are very catty, and no woman wants to see their man move to the next woman. That's just in general. You just lie, like, right? But I think it's worse for women these days and it's, women are so fucking revengeful. Like they want to get back at you or they want to keep you caught or you don't see the kid. Just, just maturity based on what you're saying. I just think it's, it's just out of control. I mean, like the way the world's going, it's hard to find a family unit, meaning a mom and dad to have kids together without, without, with no outside other kids. It's just hard now because you could be, like, I met a lot of kids, guys now who were young and dumb, had a kid by somebody, and then they get married, and they have kids with their wife, but then they got that one outside kid. You know what I'm saying? And if you didn't fix that shit from the get go, it's never gonna get fixed, because that, the girl you had the first kid with, she was like, well, we could have had that too. You didn't get it. It's just, it's always something. Just grow up. Grow up. I mean, and, 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 a lot of growing up and being mature, just being accepted. Or being, you know, being accepted to change and under, you know what I'm saying, just accepted for what it is at the end of the day. Like, you can't change, like, the past. You, you know what I'm saying? But what you can do is work on the future and what it has to bring. And if you say that you are in love and you say you love somebody, then that means that you're going to do whatever you have to do to make sure that you, that you too become a powerful fist and y'all are not separated because that's not, I mean, a fist that's powerful compared to a fist that's just like this. I mean, I can break through something like this, but if you're strong like this, it's a little harder. It's going to be that much harder. So, I mean, in a nutshell, I just feel like, you know, marriage should it's kind of become a maturity. A lot of people are not mature out there. And y'all say y'all mature, but y'all mature. Y'all might have, y'all might look like on the outside, but some of y'all ain't really mature in the head. Some of y'all need to probably look, take that step back. And realize, work like, yourself. and work on yourself, and come to realization of what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't do these cards. These are the cards that you do. And you want to have a life outside of your baby daddy and your baby mama. You don't understand what your baby mama and your baby daddy. Another day, I think that that's good. That was good. I mean, I ain't dealing with it, but I think that's that's a lot. I definitely. But I mean, that's what it is. Okay. I can barely see my own there. I have to stay up there. I think I'm going to be able to see somebody. No, I got time for all that. No, sorry. Ain't happening. Sorry. <laughs> What's your name, stop? I don't know. I don't know. Um. Oh, I said, uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, I had one about women. I mean, I have one about roommates, but me personally, I don't have a roommate because roommates come in a lot. Okay. And it, I ain't about that. I'm not, I'm not mature enough <laughs> to have a roommate at this point in my, no, no, I, I'm not gonna say I'm not mature. I just know I'm not ready to I have a roommate. Especially if we ain't like this, ain't gonna happen. Cause that causes a lot. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. I understand. It sounds good, and then when it happens, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have roommates in college, but that was different when I was in college. I mean, but you didn't have that in college. Right. Sort of and I was married, so I mean, I had a roommate when I was married, but that was, you know, my husband. So, like, when you help out others, and, you know, you let them move in, and, and right, you just want to respect your household and then sometimes their respect is not the same as your respect will be or their thought press not what your thought press is. And it's hard because 
Or your mom is, hell, I pay the bills here. You get that mom or dad mentality where he's my rude. She don't want to be like that. It, it, it's, well, that's that's a strong person to be a roommate. And that's what But see, that's a different type of roommate. I mean, I hell, I would not be. I'm about a roommate and somebody paying the bills and this, that, and the third. Yeah, that's about I'm trying to be a blessing. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's from the mother. I'm talking about roommate where, where we happen to happen. Oh, how your rent money be like? Like, if we happen to happen and I'm paying half of my rent and everything else, you ain't gonna tell me what I can and can't do. Right, that's different. In my house, as long as I'm paying what I need to be paying, this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't tell me who I can have over, this, that, and the third, because it's just, as much as it's your house, it's my house. A lot of people don't understand that. So, unless you put in the half down the bill, you ain't coming in and out of my house and doing whatever the case may be, unless we have a good understanding of what it is. But also, you just can't be rooming, you can't be rooming and mating with just all anybody, just because y'all, quote unquote, know each other, in a sense, because in a sense, like you just read me. <laughs> I'm just saying, because in a sense, I got read. But, but, <laughs> no, I'm not really reading. I got read. Let me get a shot on that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying because, Ooh. yeah, because y'all are just like two different entities. You know what I'm saying? And then that causes a lot, especially when you used to being by yourself. Like if you know you're set in your ways. Like if I come home, like I don't want my to be. A certain way. Like, I don't want to come home and then have you, like, this thing to feel like laying all on my couch. My colors ain't right. I'm not ready for all that yet. See, that's the problem. You got to know what you're ready for. You got to know what you're ready for. And I understand. I'm not, I'm not reading or anything. I'm just saying that. I'm just speaking in general. I got a lot of people just don't know what they be ready for. And, but then again, I'm not telling I'm kind of contradicting myself. Like, I understand, like, some things are, they show you a lot about yourself. True. In a sense, too. So it, it opens your eyes up and it, it helps you learn a lot about yourself as far as that. Me personally, you know, I don't feel ready. Yeah. Especially if you ain't trying to pay half. I'm going to make it work. Yeah. I'm going to do my best. But these cats are moose wings. These are like a bitch. Yeah, y'all cats are not very moose. What's good people, though? More moose no, moose. Y'all, y'all are excellent people because y'all are very moody and y'all have y'all moments and I would know because I, I dealt with. Yeah, Mom, too. Mom and sister. I want you to answer this first. I know. I think you. Hello? Hey, what's up? I don't know. I don't know. Nabil? He's at work. Oh, okay. Alright, well, let me call you right now. Alright. I should have a lot to say. <laughs> about twice. Sorry, but you should be. Oh, uh, but yeah, in a sense. I mean, hey. I understand. I mean, I'm, I'm growing, I'm learning. I'm all about being I think I'm not, I think uh, the age difference is the issue. I mean, that's all it is. But then I mean, also, that's the nine year difference. But also, the maturity level might be uh, a difference, too. Hell, oh, hell yeah, I'm very mature. Yeah. But I'm not. But I'm. But I'm not really talking about you. I'm talking in general. I get what you're saying. Yeah, but but I'm gonna add in my sheet too. Yeah, well, I mean, which is fine. But I just feel like yeah, some people are just not mature enough to be one with nobody, and you know you don't need to be one with nobody. Maturity is the key in this world. If you want to go anywhere in this world, your mind has to mature with the times. Like you can't be thinking nine years past and this nine years ahead. If that makes any sense, like. Your mind has to grow every year. Like you have to change your thought process. You keep core value, but you also can add different things here and there. I feel like a lot of people in general are just stuck in like five years past of how shit was five years ago. That's why I say about the whole flexing and staying with your mom and I think the world now is about independence. I think a lot of things now are about independence, but when you're not independent, I can't respect you because you still your mom and we're the same age. I've been married and everything, but you still stay with your mama. For no reason. There's no reason why you stay with your mom. You just stay with your mom because she ain't bothering you. That's a problem for me. I feel like the generation, the young years we have now is just, 
thinking shit ain't, I mean, oh, they're gonna be young forever. You're not. You're gonna grow. The world gonna continue to go day by day. It's not gonna stop. And every day something changes. And either you're gonna change with the world or be swept by the world. Literally, you have to, I mean, every year I think I have to learn something new, apply, change, tweak myself. At the same time, you keep the core of you, but you have to tweak yourself. If not, I mean, like back in the day, you didn't have to save. But now, with the economy, it is, you can save everything you can. Because you never know when it's going to go bad again and it couldn't jobs. And your ass is the one to get cut this time. Like, you have to, I know it's on an upswing, but at the same time, you have to prepare yourself. And it comes with progress. Right. And people ain't going with the progress. They just stuck in, I don't know what they fuck they stuck in. It, just, it ain't making no sense to me. Like, I, I know I'm young, I'm educated. I'm very opinionated, but I feel like my opinions are really, really good because I think my stuff out, and I feel like when I try and help people or give them advice, some people take it, some people don't, but the people who don't take it, I'm not saying I have like, the greatest advice, but I feel like I have all the wisdom, and people who don't take it, I just hate seeing them fall and do dumb stuff, like, you're doing the same stuff over and over, it's not working, like, try something new, I mean, I don't know, a lot of people just, people are so grimy. People are just so damn grimy. It's hard to find friends in this fucking world. We're going to close up with friends. This is my friend. And my brother at the same time. He don't bother me. I don't bother him. But it worked. Because I understand him and he understands me. It didn't always be like we had to work to get to this relationship. It didn't just, oh, we closed. It didn't. It was a progress. That's what anything. People kill me with the whole, oh, we best friends. And you just met each other. What? You don't know each other. It's a cycle. They got to understand when you in your mood, when I'm in my mood, he gets that. He know I'm going to blow up, act stupid. He's going to let that shit go. <laughs> We're like, you tripping. But it's a process. I mean, I have one best friend. That's it. I don't go out with nobody or do nothing. You can say I sit at the house all day. I'm just me. I just rather live my life where I know I'm going to be safe, secure, and I'm using what I'm paying for. That's, that's how I feel. I don't want to waste money. I feel like People like to go out and do this, do that, do that, do this, do that. And then when you get in an accident and, or if something bad happened, you lie, I shouldn't have went. Sometimes you need to sit down and relax and chill out. Just Sometimes people need to take a chill pill, relax, regroup, and then go about things differently. I think everybody's going. And then when they hit that wall, then you want to reflect. Sometimes you got to reflect as you're going. And that's, that's, I think that's, that's my main thing about friends and life in general. I think it's hard finding a good friend, and sometimes people come as disguises. They come right, but then as time passes, you see the real them, and sometimes you don't like what you see. And so you letting it go, you try to hold on to it, and when you do, it don't help you. It hurts you in the end. Like that first time would have hurt, but now it's like it's going to really hurt because you knew you should let it go, and you just bandaged it over, and you kept going, and now the scar can't be bandaged. Hemorrhaging. So I just feel like sometimes you just gotta, you gotta lose the win. <laughs> no, you gotta lose the win. Okay, yeah, but I don't really want to say nothing because I, I feel like it was a great outro. But on uh, my VP, on uh, my view on friends, I just feel like, um, to me, if, to me, I consider you a friend if you are, help, if, if whatever we have, Help me grow to that next level. And I feel like, you know, certain friends bring different parts of you and certain friends, uh, you know, tap into different parts of you, which, you know, allow you to grow and become the man and the woman that you are destined to be. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, in that sense, yeah, everybody's not going to be your ideal friend. Doesn't mean you need to cut them off. You just need to take what it is that you can from them. And keep on moving. Everybody's not supposed to be in your life for long periods of time. Everybody's not supposed to be in, you know what I'm saying? You know, your eighth one coming with the second and the third. They're not supposed to be there, you know. You have to know when everybody has, everybody has a season. You know what I'm saying? And you have to realize, like every, like every year ain't your season. Ooh. You know what I'm Cut saying? off right here. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop recording. That was, that was the message for the day. <laughs> it ain't always your season, Lou. It's not. Beep! Cut that off. <laughs> that, no. Stop.
I promise you, that right there is something you gotta think about it. It is not always your season, boo. Mm. I'm through. I ain't gonna say nothing else. I'm done. That was enough for me. Between my message and him, I think you got it. Well. I think that was it. Well, in that case. Now that will fuck him up. Well. I'm B Swag. Follow me at the Mario Swag on uh, Twitter and Mobile um, Expressions. Mobile uh, underscore. No, Mobile underscore Expressions. X P R E S S I O N S on uh, Instagram. And follow. My name's Shamir. Um, you can follow me at two piece underscore biscuit on Twitter. And then on Instagram, it's at two piece underscore rice. As you can see, I'm all about chicken and biscuits. <laughs> anyway, so we hope that, you know, this first video has been a help and we hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. We'll um, get better. But yeah, it's it is what it is. Work, if you work. like it, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs up. <laughs> Whatever. Bitch, I won't dislike it. <laughs> but you can comment though, comments yeah, are good. And we'll talk about anything, like yeah. anything. But, yeah, mm. anything. Whatever it's gonna be, we'll we'll you know, make time out. This is this week. We just kind of give you our thoughts of just what we've been going through. And my head won't look like this every week. Yeah. It won't. His head look good. But you know, I did it for you. My boo. Well, I love you. Woo! Anyway, so. But yo, love y'all. Y'all stay safe. Until next time. Well, next Monday. We'll see you next Monday. Next Monday.